Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a black-white clerics deck featuring a pyre of heroes as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. So this isn't going to be your typical black-white life gain synergy deck. Instead we have a lot more sacrifice synergy with cards like Demon's Disciple and the Graveyard Recursion from Skyclave Hierophant. And then of course four copies of Pyre of Heroes, which is why the deck is named Hierophant. The two mana rare artifact from Kaldheim lets us sacrifice a creature by paying two mana and tapping the pyre. And then we get to search our library for a creature card that shares a creature type with the sacrifice creature and has converted mana cost equal to one plus that creature's converted mana cost and then we get to put that card straight onto the battlefield so our deck has plenty of creatures that have a beneficial enter the battlefield ability so that they provide a bit of value when they come into play and then we don't mind sacrificing them as much to our pyre and then move up the chain to eventually end up with our five drops drana the last blood chief and our judge of valor so let's take a look at the rest of the deck, starting out with our 1-drops, where we've got the full playset of Archfiend's Vessel, a 1-mana one 1-1 one Human Cleric with lifelink, and if the Vessel enter the battlefield from our graveyard, we can exile it and turn it into a 5-5 Demon token instead. And we've got a few ways of reanimating the Vessel, and the most straightforward way is with our Skyclave Hierophant and a more expensive Cleric dying. Then at 2-mana we've got the full set of Skyclave Cleric, a 1-3 that when it enters the battlefield it gains 2 life, and we also have the flexibility of playing it as a tap land instead. Then we also have the full set of Elder Fang Disciple, 2 mana 1 1, that when it enters the battlefield makes each opponent discard a card. And then finally, Priest of the Haunted Edge, which is why we're playing all these snow lands in the mana base. And for 2 mana, we get an 0 4 Zombie Cleric that we can tap and sacrifice. And then target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of snow lands we control. We can only use this at sorcery speed. And then at 3 mana, we've got a whole toolbox of creatures to potentially search up with our pyre, including a single and copy of a righteous valkyrie 3 mana, 2 for flyer, and whenever an angel or cleric enters the battlefield under our control, we gain life equal to that creature's toughness, and as long as we have 27 or more life, then our creatures get plus 2 plus 2 as well. Then we've got the full playset of Demon's Disciple, which is a great follow-up to one of our earlier creatures, and then we get a 3-1 that when it enters the battlefield says each player sacrifices a creature or planeswalker, so this is a great removal option alongside our Priest of Haunted Edge, and with all the graveyard recursion we can keep getting our Demon's Disciple back from the graveyard to eventually sacrifice all the opponent's creatures. And then we also have a one of Tamborak's Hope's Demise, 3 mana, 2-2 two, two legendary demon cleric with lifelink, and it has lifelink as long as we have 5 or more plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and whenever another non-token creature we control dies, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Tamborax, and if that creature was a cleric we also get to draw a card at the cost of 1 life. And then we have a Singleton Veto, Thorn of the Dusk Rose, 3 mana, 1, 3, Legendary Vampire Cleric, and whenever we gain life, target opponent loses that much life, so great alongside our Skyclave Cleric and some of our lifelink creatures like the Skyclave Hierophant. And then for 5 mana, creatures we control gain a lifelink until end of turn, so that can also potentially help us end the game, also great with our Righteous Valkyrie of course. Then at 4 mana, the centerpiece of the deck alongside Pyre of Heroes is Aura, Skyclave Hierophant, 4 mana, 3-3 three, three Legendary Core Cleric with Lifelink, and whenever Aura or another Cleric we control dies, return a target Cleric card with lesser converted mana cost from our graveyard to the battlefield. So this can set up some very nice chains where we potentially get back a Demon's Disciple if one of our more expensive Clerics dies, then Demon's Disciple sacrifices another creature, which will in turn trigger the Skyclave Hierophant again, and maybe end up up reanimating our Archfiend's Vessel, which will then turn into a 5-5 Demon token, and of course also great alongside Pyre, helping us sacrifice more creatures and get more value from the graveyard. Then we also have a one-off copy of Skemfar Shadow Sage as a 4-drop we don't really mind sacrificing, as it's a 2-5 that when it enters the battlefield we can make each opponent lose X life or we gain X life, where X is the greatest number of creatures we control that have a creature type in common, which is going to be Cleric in our case. And then we also have two copies of Draugr Necromancer, another incentive for playing all these snow lands, a 4 mana 4-4 four, four snow creature zombie cleric, saying if a non-token creature an opponent controls would die, exile that card with an ice counter on it instead, and we may cast those exiled cards and our snow lands will tap for 1 mana of any color when it comes to casting those cards, which is why having snow lands is so important. And then topping off our curve, a singleton Drana, the last blood chief, 5 mana 4-4 four, four legendary vampire cleric with flying, and whenever Drana attacks, defending player 
player chooses a non-legendary creature card in our graveyard, and we get to return that card to the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it, and also turns it into a vampire. And then we have a Judge of Valor, 5 mana, 2-4 legendary angel cleric with flying and lifelink, and whenever we cast our second spell each turn, we can look at the top three cards of our library, put one of them into our hand, and the rest goes into our graveyard, which can also fuel our graveyard recursion with our Skyclave Hierophant. And then the mana base is very straightforward and quite budget friendly, with just 6 snow covered plains, 14 snow covered swamps, 4 copies of Fable Passage to search them up, and then of course we can't forget about our Skyclave Cleric. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. We've got our Pyre of Heroes, and some creatures to sacrifice facing Fireblade Charger. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to cast Cleric this game, so we'll just fetch up a Swamp. Alright, put on Black Rat, so maybe a party deck, as we see a Wizard here on turn 2. And then turn 3 probably going to play creature and then turn 4 we can play pyre and activate it. Alright, opponent full jund and acquisitions experts. So can show them double pyre or pyre and two lanes. Yeah, I guess it makes more sense, and then hope they select Pyre. Alright, opponent selects Pyre. And then I think I'll go with Valkyrie for now. Although I guess Tabarax can give me more value if next turn my plan is to Pyre activate. Fair enough. So, we're gonna see a channeler activation, finds the Juru Paragon, so opponent's definitely setting up some party synergies here. In black there's Coveted Prize as well as Zagras as potential party payoffs. And then, probably want to go for Demon's Disciple. Opponent can sacrifice Charger, but that's okay. And that will draw another card with Tabarox. Eh, gets rid of Expert instead. And then I think I want to play defense with Tabarox. Don't feel comfortable racing, although if... Zagros comes down and gives the team death touch, it's not going to be a great blocker outside of blocking the 4-4, I guess. Another Acquisitions Experts. With a full party here, so I can essentially protect one card. So, I guess we'll just not show them Necromancer. They'll probably take Valkyrie, but that's okay. Can maybe get it back from the graveyard at some point. Right, gets Disciple. Trying to protect her hand. So... Yeah, now I can go Valkyrie. And get my Harrowfant at 4 mana, that seems strong. Alternatively, we can get some removal in play to deal with the opponent's board, which I also don't mind. And then next turn Necromancer can get a ton of value. Or we can go Valkyrie into a single Priest. Sure. Not making use of Pyre, but we still get to gain some life, and now 
I can probably afford to attack. Alright, another expert. Probably takes Necromancer. And Disciple gonna clean out my hand. Alright, at least we played some of our cards out before the opponents made us discard everything. And yeah, it's Tabarok's time to shine. Priest probably wants to go after Channeler. Although I think I want to get my uh, four drop in play first, which is probably gonna sacrifice Valkyrie. And then we'll get Hierophant. Although we don't have any one drops in the graveyard to get back. But we still get to draw with Tabarax. And we're pretty close to giving him a lifelink. Another Fireblade Charger. And we'll take three. Demon's Disciple is quite nice. Sacrifice Disciple itself, get a two drop. Tabarox draws and we'll get back Cleric since we're gonna sacrifice it right away. Tabarox gains lifelink, sacrifice Cleric, get another Demon's Disciple which gets back another two drop. And you can see where this is going. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. We've got our turn two Pyre of Heroes, just hoping to find more cheap creatures to sacrifice. Yeah, I guess we'll play Priest of Haunted Edge first. Opponent on blue red with Invasion of the Giants, so a giant tribal. It's gonna have some sweepers potentially, so that could give us a bit of trouble. Play Pyre. At least Demon's Disciple's good at taking care of larger threats that the opponent might have. Like this here, Crystal and Giants, which I guess also dies to Haunted Edge. Ooh, perfect. Archfiend's Vessel. So now I can play Vessel, play Disciple, sacrificing Vessel, so that ends up in the graveyard. Still have my Priest of Haunted Edge. And next turn I can maybe search up Harrowfant. And then if I sack Priest, get back my Vessel as a Demon. And at 5 Toughness, the Demon survives. Battle of Frost and Fire, dealing 4 damage to non-giants. Quakebringer. Alright, so we even drew the Hierophant. So how do we want to play this? I guess no real need to use Pyre, or I can use Pyre to potentially play around a Sweeper so we still have Hierophant in hand. And then... Yeah, I think I wanna sacrifice Disciple, even though we could've potentially dealt 3 damage, but this way we get to get our Demon, which seems more important. Could also go for Necromancer, but... I just wanna get this Demon in play. And now we have a threat that survives Battle of Frost and Fire. And Harafant can generate a ton of value here. Another Crystalline Giants gets flying. Priest of Haunted Edge can be sacrificed to get Demon's Disciple. Which can then 
sacrifice itself to get Priest of Haunted Edge back. So that's a lot of removal for the opponent to fight through. There's a battle frost and fire, although we will still get a creature or two back here. And then I guess we'll go for a Priest of Haunted Edge. And then now I could play Drana. Do we have a better line? Could play Disciple, get a 4-drop, but Hierophant's probably the best 4-drop we can get. Yeah, just casting Drana seems fine here. And hit for 5. Sadly, cannot sacrifice my token to get another Archfiend's Vessel, since they don't share any creature types. Another Battle of Frost and Fire deals with Drana and Priest. Still leaves our demon alive. Alright, Cleric can get a 3-drop, which is maybe better for now. And which one do we want to get? Vito, Righteous Valkyrie, Taborax. Let's go with Valkyrie. And then our opponent concedes. Sweet. So managed to outgrind some blue red giants here despite lots of sweepers. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Gonna play one cleric tapped. And we'll just curve out for now. Next turn, play Valkyrie. Aha, uh -huh, the Ozolith. And an Emery for one mana. Alright, depending on what they mill. Another Ozolith, I guess I don't really care about. So they can keep Emery for a turn. And just get Valkyrie online. Which is not too far from gaining a bunch of life here and giving our creatures plus two plus two. Opponent has got a Redan, God of the Worthy. That's okay. Play Priest here. Snow Lion's coming to play tapped because of Redan. So it's a creature we wouldn't mind taking out. Solemn Simulacrum. Gonna soak up our Demon's Disciple if we play it. And also quite good with Emery. Alright, another Priest of Haunted Edge is a better solution here. It's gonna pump up my team. And then probably still down to take out a ray down here. And then just send Valkyrie if we don't want them getting value from Emery. Or we can take out Emery. And then let them keep Raidan. Nah, we'll kill Raidan. And then 
attack, and if my opponent jumps with Simulacrum, Disciple will get Emery. And we'll sacrifice Skyclave Cleric. So we still have a removal spell available and a nice bit of board pressure. Forsaken Monuments explain some of these colorless lines. Veto also an excellent draw. It's going to trigger Valkyrie for five. And Xaxes here. Sweet. Managed to beat blue whites artifacts onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Could use a few more lanes, but if we can sacrifice Disciple and go up the chain with Pyre, that will be nice, and then Hierophant already in hand. So, could play Pyre first, but it's gonna be a while before we can actually activate it, so I'm okay getting Disciple in play, make the opponent's decision more difficult. And our opponent's on Black Green with Visionary. And uh, Mire Triton. Alright, we'll get Pyre in play. And then next turn we can decide which 3-drop to get, could be... The one that makes the opponent sacrifice a creature. Ooh, even better. So now I can play Vessel, get another 2-drop. And get another Disciple, perhaps. Or I can play Vessel, sacrifice the current Disciple. To make the opponent sacrifice. And then next turn, I can maybe search up Aura if we haven't found white mana by then. So a lot of ways we can play this but I kind of like this line. So, yeah, let's get Demon's Disciple. Sacrifice Vessel. One has got an Acolyte of Affliction. Which gets back Visionary. And we drew another Disciple. So, kind of want to get Hierophant online. Could also go for Draugr Necromancer. But this seems slightly better. And now we've got double Pyre of Heroes. So even if they kill Hierophant, I'll still get value from the graveyard here. And Murder Strider does exactly that. So, can make a demon, can make the opponent discard, or we can make the opponent sacrifice. I think I kind of like the Disciple play here, just because that way it can potentially sacrifice it to the other Demon's Disciple we have. Alright, we drew both 5 drops, which is a little unfortunate. But I get to hit for 1. And go up the chain here. Sacrifice Disciple, get a 3 drop. Probably not gonna go for Disciple now. And instead, something I don't mind sacrificing, I guess, Veto here. And search up another Hierophant. And then now if we play Disciple from Hands, we'll get a ton of value from our Hierophant once again. Haunted Edge. Could also play Haunted Edge, search up another Disciple, that's even better. I 
This makes a demon. And this gets a disciple. Sacrifice itself. And get a two drop. Lots of disciples, lots of demons. The names are a bit confusing in this deck. And then we get to hit for three. So yeah, even without white mana, our deck functions nicely. A Mire Triton. And drag on the demon. Take two. Alright, so now I can get my white mana. Although, what's the play? I could play Demon's Disciple to sacrifice Elderfang Disciple and then get another 4 drop. Don't hate that idea. Even though there's no 1 drop to get back. But now we get back our 2 drop, which is going to be Haunted Edge since our opponent's empty handed. And we'll search up Necromancer. And then. I could attack since I can just play another Hierophant. And if this dies, I get Veto back, which is decent. And then Necromancer lets us play Mire Triton as well. So lots of graveyard shenanigans here. Polucronos is just gonna die to my Priest of the Haunted Edge. And I'll play my own Polucronos here. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. So, yeah, even with our five drops stuck in hand, we managed to outgrind our opponent onto the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Do we play Skyclave on one? I think we do. And then we get to curve Priest into Valkyrie into Hierophant, although keeping Priest until after Valkyrie might also be beneficial. So if that's the case, maybe I should wait just to kind of wait and see whether or not we pick up an extra land and get to save this to gain more life. All right, Judge of Valor. Yeah, I guess we'll play a Cleric now, and then I'll gain my 4 life of Priest of Haunted Edge. Turn to Guardian Gladewalker, so some sort of Changeling deck. Saving Priest will also potentially enable two spells in the same turn for Judge of Valor. Feline Sovereign. Alright. So Gladewalker does get protection from dogs. I guess Hierophant's more mana efficient here. And then probably stay back. Another Feline Sovereign, so... They both get in there. Just block the one. Disciple to draw, so can double spell next turn with Judge of Valor. And still gonna hang back. Yeah, the sovereigns are adding up. If we had Priest of Haunted Edge in play, we could take one out. And maybe we would have gotten to 27 in the meantime. Warmaster into a Realmwalker. So that counts as an elf. Although Realmwalker naming cats, so they've got some cool tribal synergies going here. Just 
Just uh, four damage we'll take. And Demon's Disciple, not very effective against a 1 1 token. So we're just gonna Disciple plus Haunted Edge and see what we pick up. And then next turn I can sacrifice Haunted Edge. I guess Vessel going to the graveyard is actually beneficial for me here. Although I could also play it next turn and trigger Judge of Valor again. And then next turn I can sacrifice Priest. And then when we play Disciple and sacrifice Disciple to itself, I'll be able to get the Priest back from the graveyard. Or we can potentially go for Disciple. And then... Yeah, maybe we'll just still stay on defense here. Keep our life total high. A mask with Nexus. So now every creature is also a cat and an elf or warmaster. I can double block a 3 3 and take it out. Like so. And then chump with Disciple perhaps. And then next turn we get to take out Realmwalker. Another Demon's Disciple. So play Vessel. And then I wanna Priest first. Taking out Realmwalker, I think. Shut down the card advantage, play Disciple, and probably go for Fable Passage here. Gain some life, sag Disciple itself. Get back a 2-drop, I guess we'll make them discard. And they had a Toski in hand. And Sag Disciple itself once again. And get back Priest. And we'll start beating down. I guess the original plan was to sacrifice Vessel. So we could make a 5-5 demon, but I think we'll be just fine. A lot of ways we could have played it out here. Well, this is probably the matchup where we didn't want to draw Pyro of Heroes with all this artifact destruction that the opponent has. Jeez. And then our opponent packs it in. So... Yeah, we got to see some cool games against some unique decks from our opponents as well. Of course, we didn't face too many tier 1 decks, so I don't expect this to be a very competitive choice, but it does do a pretty good job at demolishing opposing creature decks with all the built-in removal and recursion and life gain as well. So this is a pretty fun and mechanically unique deck. The other option when building around Power of Heroes that I ended up with is a Mono Red Goblins deck, which was also pretty fun, but not nearly as interesting as this one. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.